Lift your hands, church. Say it loud and clear. The Spirit of the Lord is at work upon me. Come on, say it louder. The Spirit of the Lord is at work upon me. I'm not given to fear. I have the Spirit of liberty. The Spirit of the Lord is at work in my life. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And as a righteous man, I am as bold as a lion. It doesn't matter the wall of fears built from the days you were young. As the word of the Lord goes forth tonight, every wall of fear crumbles. Say that amen louder and clearer. The things you have not been able to do because of fear. Receive grace to begin to execute. Receive grace to begin to execute. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Give the Lord a big, big, big hand. Thank you, Jesus. Please, thank you, streams of life. Please celebrate them. Please be seated, church. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Uh, I want to welcome everyone, our people, all the way from Ileife, um, connected with this service online. Um, everyone connected to the grace of God upon my life, sons, daughters, mentees, LA Church. We want to say welcome. And to our audience online, those who are connected to this meeting, um, welcome. Now I want to lay this foundation. Um, sometimes it can be, it can, most of my teachings are connected one to another. So my teachings are not the kind of teachings that you can just pick once and feel you have heard everything I have to say on that subject matter. Is that okay now? So, because I pastor a local assembly primarily, my teachings are a chain network across different series on the same subject matter. So, um, it is important that if you are going to listen to a subject, listen to every series, every part of that series for you to be properly built as God will have you built. Is that very clear now? So don't just pick something and believe you have heard everything I have to say on that subject matter. No. Listen to everything I've discussed around that area and avoid mindless lifting. Is that very clear now? All right, so I need you to have that at the back of your mind. And um, if what you want is a victorious life in Christ, if what you want is a proper Christian development that does not look spooky, something very simple that can be learnable for everyone, if what you want is simplicity, not necessarily something that looks deep, then pay attention to what I'm teaching. Because if you are looking for some unnecessary depth, you may be disappointed. But if what you want is clarity, if what you want is the spirit of that subject matter to be infused in you, then please listen. Are you following what I'm saying here? Are you following what I'm saying? And for those of you who are here who have not been actively going back to listen to the things I've been teaching you, please repent. 
I was in a conversation with the Lord this afternoon. And I was asking the Lord that I don't like to see men of God die early or die young. It's been a conversation because the grace I carry is pro-life. And the Lord responded to my spirit and said, while you may not have answer for everything, but you will discover that in all of the places that that has happened, none of them has been talking about longevity. There are many of you who are lost. You are here, but you have too many voices speaking to you. That even after I've taught you, you still go different places and hear things that are strange. They destroy it in your heart. You are not built wholeheartedly the way God will have you built roundedly because you have conflicting voices. There are people that we may appear in posters, and I say this with all humility, that our belief systems are not necessarily the same. Are you following what I'm saying here? I think I was in a meeting with some of you last week. Somebody spoke down on length of days. I said no. No. It doesn't matter what you think, what you believe. There are scriptures to justify this. I know a man can walk with God and walk through this earth and live in a ripe old age like the devil doesn't exist. He's not standing on anything spooky. He's standing on the word. The word is that powerful. And what is more painful is that in the face of every error, there's always a believer to say yes, sir. There is. And it sounds like validation and endorsement because people... Hmm. If what we are building in the Nigerian church is to last, we must build people on the world. If what we are building in the global church, if Christianity will not be threatened, then it must be an establishment on the infallible word, not on my experience. The word is not trying to catch up with my experience. My experience is what is trying to catch up with the reality of the word. Because what is written is written. Your words are settled in heaven, O oh Lord, they are settled. And I want to also beg you in the name that is above all names. Nothing will necessarily work for you because you are in a house where it is working. You must have the revelation of Christ for yourself. So, I want to see that when the devil comes against you, your response is not, I belong to the sphere of light church. And in sphere of life, church, we have a covenant of life. No. Your response is, it is written. What is your response? If there are believers who can bring out what is written in the face of opposite situation, those are real believers. Are you following what I'm saying here? Sphere of life, are you following what I'm saying here? And that's why I instructed deliberately for a combined service. I am the one that God has sent to feed you with the word that he considered that your destiny needs. If not, he would have led you somewhere else. And while you are here, please pay attention to those teachings. Are you following what I'm saying here? Your victory in Christ should not be a subject of negotiation. No, no, no. It has to be enforced. Are you following what I'm saying here? Are you following what I'm saying here? Build family. Rooted deeply in the word of God that cannot fail. It does not have the ability to fail. Avoid too many voices. Please. Avoid too many voices. Stay with this word. If you stay with the word and pray with it, you will not pray amiss. 
Are you following what I'm saying here? Sometimes I come to you, why have I been teaching? If you go and follow the lineup of the teachings we've been having since January, you will know that we are not fighting as one beating the air. It is lines upon lines, precept upon precept. These are deliberate stops because of what God wants to do. And it is important that the people have entered true knowledge. So these things are not supposed to excite you in the service. They are supposed to be a concrete lifestyle. That having left the service, the life is guaranteed. And I tell you, I don't know about other messages, but I know the devil will fight you from listening to what I teach. And you have to pay attention to it. If you find me teach something that is not in line with scripture, cancel what I've taught, stay with scriptures. It is my duty to make sure that as much as God helps me, I stay with the word. Are you following what I'm saying here? I will not make um, culture, scripture, or scripture, culture. No, no, no. Stay with what is written. If God says don't eat, I won't say don't touch. Are you following what I'm saying here? What we're about to discuss, if truly you listen, and if truly you have given the Holy Spirit a space in your heart for the word of God to shift you from one point to another, then this one should. You know there are believers that are not really carryable by the Spirit. They are too heavy. They've dwelt for so long in the flesh. By the grace of God, a retreat is coming during Easter. Am I correct? There's a retreat coming during Easter. We're going to be here shut down. I follow what I'm saying here. Shut down gadgets, shut down everything. Come and learn God's word. And pray. Are you following what I'm saying here? So let's look at this scripture. I will assume I have not laid any foundation in workers' meeting. So I'm going to start afresh. Proverbs chapter number 28. Proverbs chapter number 28 verse 1. So I'm taking you on the subject audacity. Audacity. Proverbs 28 verse 1. The wicked flee when no one pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Can we read this together? One, two, three, go. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. What does this mean? Um, the only way you can, the only creature you can compare the kind of boldness, you must understand that this is boldness. Referred to here, boldness um, is not necessarily faith. Um, are you following what I'm saying? Boldness is not necessarily faith. The root of faith is the word. But there is boldness, which is a disposition to life. But the truth is, you cannot be a man of faith and not be bold. Are you following what I'm saying here? You cannot say it. You cannot be a man of faith and not be bold. Faith and fear do not operate together. The aim of this teaching is that is to the end that God practically destroys the yoke of fear. Can I hear a big amen to that? That someone seated under this teaching at whatever year you pick it up to listen to it. Any fear, you must have been living your life with dice. Why? It is only the wicked that flees when no one. So one of the package that comes with righteousness is boldness. And that's why you notice. And please, it is, let me quickly say this. It is important you also understand. That righteousness is not a function of what you do right or wrong. Righteousness is a gift. Righteousness is a gift. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5, for the sake of clarity, let's start reading from verse 17. So you can, I mean, you can pick it from there. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, behold, all things are new. Yes, I become new. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. 
and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Yes. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be reconciled to God. Verse 21 now. For he had made us, he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we might be made what? The righteousness of God where? In him. Look at it. Romans chapter number 6. I need to quickly build a foundation on this because it was not part of what I wanted to teach you. But I need to sit on the subject of righteousness because the best time the devil finds it easy and convenient to bring him um, the spirit of fear is when he has seen that you have done something that is not right or something um, something that is not right. All right? Let me quickly... Um, are you there? Romans chapter number 6 now, quickly. Let's start the reading from verse 4. Romans 6 verse 4. Therefore, we are, we are baptized into Jesus Christ. Sorry, sorry, please. Verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by the baptism into his death. That as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of his father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in likeness of his death, we also shall be in likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, and the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more, for death has no dominion over him. For him that he died, he died unto sin once. In that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but to be alive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore in your mortal bodies, that you should um, obey the laws thereof. Neither yield your members as instrument of unrighteousness, but yield yourself... But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness. That is, your members are already instruments of righteousness. From the moment you are in Christ, every part of your members are. It is now your duty to yield yourself in accordance with what is. Let me tell you what the devil does. If you look at the book of Romans 12, all right, no, Romans chapter number 8, quickly. Romans chapter number 8. You look at what the devil does. He said, there is now therefore no more condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. All right, now look at it. What the devil does is this. He, he wants to fundamentally, please pay attention. Fundamentally, he wants to disrupt your orientation on the subject of righteousness. He wants it to be as something you are fighting to get, not as a free gift in Christ. He wants it to be, he wants righteousness to be a feeling, not a gift. Let me explain like that. He wants you to feel righteous in the days you are doing something right and feel condemned in the days you cannot. And the end of that is to see what he did with Adam. The moment he was able to convince them that they had seen before God. What happened next? They became afraid of God, their companion. That's what happens. So really, the root of fear is condemnation. That's the root of fear. Condemnation. Listen to me. Um, repentance and condemnation sometimes look alike. Like somebody is regretting that I've made a mistake and condemnation, they are not the same. A repentance drives you back to God. Condemnation drives you away from God. Repentance makes, listen to me, please pay attention. When you are repenting from an habit, scripture says that godly sorrow makes way for repentance. So in repentance, there is something called godly sorrow. That is what comes, that having paid all this price for me, oh, this is something that should not be done. But you see, in condemnation, it makes it look that you are too big to fail. If you have done that, you are no longer worthy of God's love. Repentance drives you back to that love that is in God. Condemnation tells you you don't deserve it anymore. Are you following what I'm saying here? 
So you must have this basic understanding. The root of fear. Why This, this happens in basic relations. Sometimes I see people, they've not reached out to me for some month, and you ask why. It's because they feel, now that I've not been able to reach out for so and so and so months, he must be angry with me, he must be cross with me. And you see, it keeps them hanging. It happens in every other sphere of relationship. It keeps them hanging sometimes for weeks, for months, and sometimes for years. To the end that they are completely detached. Many relationships have dried. Because somebody feels, oh, because I've not been able to do this. If I should do it now, are you following that? Let me give you a very practical example. Somebody has a major need and is supposed to call a pastor and say, ah, I can't call him now. If I call him now, it will look as though I only call him in the days of need. That can't be the Holy Ghost. That's the voice of pride. That's the voice of pride. That's the same thing that happens between you and God. I've not studied my Bible for three days. I'm too filthy to study. That's how the fellow will go throughout the year without studying. It started from condemnation. Oh, I've not prayed for two weeks. You notice when, when you begin to pray, that sluggishness you feel is never God keeping malice with you. It's too mature too. That sluggishness, that draggy, that thing you feel, it is the condemnation, the Lord cost us of demons trying to drive you away from the love of the Father. Let me say this to you. Even if it takes 20 years, you'll be in fire away. The Father's arms are always wide open. What happens to you is that it takes you a while to perceive the love. You are the one who is slow to receive the love. He's not the one who is slow to give you. The love is ever constant. This is the root of what has driven many believers away. Do you think it was a small thing for the prodigal son to say, I will now go back to my father's house? That is what many people never say. They never believe the father can still love them. I'm giving you practical examples. So the moment condemnation sets in, my God, there is comp the relationship with God is severed, then fear as a torment sets in. Say it loud and clear. God is not angry with me. God is not angry with me. Hold on. Who do you think God is? You know, I think one of the... The body of Christ is going to experience shakings. The body of Christ is... Let me leave it there. Because one of the... I'm not of you saw... Let, I'm going to say this publicly because it's also public. I'm not of you saw what Pastor W.F. Kumuyi pushed out recently. I'm not of you wept when you saw it. He said the church is misrepresenting the word of God. He said when people... He showed the scripture that you should... When you are prophesying, cover your hair for you honor yourself and all that. He said, people come to church without covering their hair. You detain them outside and give them scarf. He said, that's you misrepresenting the word of God. I said, Jesus Christ. Something is happening. See, you can sit down and blame the fathers. You must understand it takes a measure of death to do what they are doing. It is not easy to stand all those years, no scandal, build, and then look back at the tail end of their lives. And God said, I just this. And the answer is yes, sir. Anyone who sit back and insult them and say, now they are just knowing the word. That fellow doesn't know God. It is the agenda of God. Let me say this to you. No matter what you study, you can't know beyond the curriculum for your dispensation. You can't. Such that at the end of your life, an imagine it's a glorious church, it's a moving church. An emergence comes of another version that needs to learn your stability. Let me leave it. Are you following what I'm saying? What is the root of fear? Condemnation. God is too angry with me. I mean, you start praying, you've not been able to pray for a while. 
That's why I want to ask, who do you think God is? An African father? Talk to me now. An African father? And that's why the elder brother of the prodigal son could not understand the father. I've been in the house all the while. This guy has gone to mess up. He has squandered everything he has. Came back and you are throwing a feast for him. The father understood that this one coming understands my mercy and righteousness. What you have only understood is your own ability to keep yourself. There is no feast yet until you understand. What is keeping you is not you. I am the one. That doesn't mean you go to mess up. Are you following what I'm saying here? How many of you can relate to what I'm teaching you tonight? Some things happen in your life. You went through some tunnel. Sometimes you even misbehaved. You, uh, uh, you misbehaved. And the relationship looked like it was severed. The... What now keeps it lingering is those thoughts that if you go back now, I mean, how many of you have started praying and for the first time you feel, ah, God is just trying to be happy with you now. As you keep praying, God is now getting happy. That's your theology fighting your growth. You have believed wrongly about God. You have been taught wrongly about him. Some people have misrepresented him to you. They've, 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 they've represented him as a vicious angry God threatened you with curses and it looks like it's God who is against you. Can I tell you this? Let me open up to you about this. If there's any secret tears I have, it is not for a big church Not to travel around the nations, no. Father, can you do something to me that makes me mirror you exactly? Let me tell you something. If you have a child that offends you and the child comes to say, Daddy, I'm sorry, and you still insult the child and say, get out of my room. Do you know what happens? That child perceives God like that. So in the day that things are not really fine with the child, and the child cries to God, and God has forgiven the child, the child will not believe. There are many of you seated here that you are expecting consequences on things that God has forgiven, and you are still expecting consequences. Some believe they can never marry the quality of the man they should marry because I've done this and this should be the... What did he die for? What did he shed the blood for? Are you following what I'm saying here? I don't care what you have done before. That you are seated here, the blood covers you. And let me say this to you. It looks like you're a superman when you are wallowing in your pain. You know, you know it's pride. It's arrogance. Because, ah, it won't me. You better quickly run back to the cross. It won't me. It won't me. It won't me. That it won't me will keep you there for decades. Are you following what I'm saying here? Say it again. I have been forgiven. Come on. You, you are not... You, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, I, I feel there are some of you that what you were forgiven from is not really much. But for those who, your life has been one kind before. And God did not just forgive you, he made you brand new. You are the one who is trying to tell everybody about the past that no longer exists. So if you understand what forgiveness is, say it again, I have been forgiven. Justified. Redeemed, pardoned, glorified, and equipped in Christ Jesus. Furnished in his love.
It's not our fault. It's what Christ did. I said it's not our fault. I said it's not our fault. It's what Christ did. You need to have this revelation. You need this revelation. Because the devil is going to be, please, I want to beg you in the name of God. Can I beg you? Can I beg you? Can I beg you? Pay attention to what is happening in the body of Christ. There's a movement. There's a shift. Don't sit in the middle of condemnation. You can't get better that way. Now, people believe that when you teach the finished works of Christ on the cross, you're empowering people to keep sinning. Are you funny? Don't you know? You fall into the sin of pornography and masturbation once. You sit there and say, ah, see my life. You do it again till you no longer even feel any energy to say God this. What is keeping you there? Condemnation. But somebody fell into this. Something you have cried for help about. And you stood up and went back to God. And said, oh Lord, this is my life, this. And you know you have been forgiven. The love compels you away from it. Because the love of God is invasive. It is invasive. I said his love is invasive. Are you following what I'm saying here? Say that I'm not condemned. Say it again, I'm not condemned. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Sing it loud and clear. I'm no longer a slave to sin. To sin I am. I am a child. I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave. I am, I am a child. I buy a shoe that need be teachers to bring job. I buy a shoe that go see you. Lift your hands as one justified. I buy a shoe that. Nibiti Jesu Benjoba Abara Eshuda Kosio Single revelation I'm no longer a slave to sin I am I am a child I'm no longer I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am, I am a child. Now, practically embrace the Lord in that love. Practically. 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 Practically embrace that love. Practically. Oh, Fede Kela. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, many of you have issues of forgiveness that you are the only one left to forgive yourself. God has forgiven you and has moved on. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, let me show you a scripture. Hebrews 4.16. Please be seated, everybody. Thank you, streams of light. Please be seated. You can hold your mics to your seat if you can. Hebrews 4, 16. Look at it. Can we read this together? One, two, three, go. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in a time of... If you look at the Bible, hey, there are many things that are unbelievable. If the media can help me, look at when the angel of God came to meet Gideon. He called him a mighty man of valor. 
each time Michael, is it Michael? Michael now, met Daniel, referred to him as a man greatly beloved. When Gabriel met Mary, referred to her as the one who has found favor in the sight of God. Usually you are greater in the spirit realm than you can think. That's what happens. Because even when Gideon was being referred to as a mighty man of valor, he didn't believe it. The mighty man was at that moment running away from the Amalekites. He was under an oak tree, sifting wheat. How do you see a man while he was turning in battle and say there is a might in you? You are the only one who have not seen it. Might is not a necessary, it's not a function of mentality. You may be mighty and not know. You may be mighty and not know. I'm telling you, you may be mighty and not know. You may be in a place. When we came to this city, what, what, what were we doing? We we're asking for shops. I'm not against those who are using shops. But there was something we came with. And I didn't realize it. And it didn't mean it will leave till the day you realize it. There are many of you who are in smaller places because you are not aware. You won't even believe it. If God shows you to you, you won't believe it because you've heard. Guess what? Many of those who are mighty in the spirit realm are not even preachers. Because you believed that the display of might is that you hold the microphone and command things. Many of us are standing here because those who are not holding this microphone are praying tirelessly for us. They are mighty men. I said they are mighty men. You only hear testimonies of preachers. Others are not preaching for you to hear what they are going through. So you believe you have to hang around the altar with might, with microphone. Only then you are now becoming a general in faith. What do you think the battlefront is? Say it again, the might of God is at work in me. Say it again loud and clear. Let me say this to you. Many things affect people's courage. Affect level of boldness. Sometimes the thought of the family you are coming from. The thought of your nationality. The thought of your school. Listen to me. Many of you went through schools you were bigger than. Even while as a student, you were bigger than the school. But you didn't know. And the school too didn't know. See, the reason why some of you don't have things to boast of is that you are the one they'll be boasting of. They say, do you know so, so, and so, and so? That's our product. Yeah. Hey, hey. So you are, you are trying to compare yourself and believe that what gives you endorsement in life and destiny is the size of school. That kind. I'm not against quality. You must understand what I'm saying here. But you must understand that destiny is bigger than all those things. I said destiny is bigger than all those things. You might be born in a family that is one bedroom apartment for six children. Destiny is bigger. Does it matter when you have entered your first time of entering a plane? That you enter a plane for the first time at age above 30. Does it mean you can't buy the plane before 40? What do you think? It is about pictures in Lagos Island or pictures in Ukraine or pictures in America. Destiny is bigger. Some of you are trying to pursue visa that <laughs> if you know what your life is about, visa should be pursuing you. You don't know. So you think you have to get to a country, get to a place, for you to now get recognized, for you to now become this. Many of you feel it is associations that will validate you. So you've lived for over 30 years, but we still don't know you because you've lived every other life except yours. Look at it. Judges 6, 12. It referred to him a mighty man. Ah, thou mighty man. A boy is somewhere touching a girl. Listen to me. The devil is saying, you are a fornicator. You are a fornicator. God is saying, my prophet. 
my prophet. If you know who you are, you get up from there. Because you don't know who you are. You are mighty men of valor entering into a secret room to do things that are immoral because they don't know. They are not aware. I said they don't know. They don't know. None of you girls are dating boys you should be mentoring because you don't know. You are going to organize business seminar in five, six years and that same guy will come to submit as a mentee. But you don't know. Listen to me. Listen to me. Wait. Let me balance it. Uh, I won't leave you like that. Words are person specific. That kind of word now, like might go out and somebody, see, this same thing that will be for somebody can also destroy another person. You now live here in arrogance. You look at a guy from A to Z, say me to you, you to when baby. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, calm down. You see, listen to me. Listen, hold on. Someone from the altar can kill you if you don't have the Holy Ghost interpreting it personally. He has to be there telling you that one. Others have said amen. It's not yours. Ah. We're in church. We are saying for those who can say amen before the end of this year, you have twins. You are not in a relationship. You are not engaged. How do you want to have it? It's not yours. You see, you don't have to say amen to every prayer. That's religion. Sometimes you say, be married. You are not ready. You are not. Don't say amen, but in advance. What are you doing? Are you following what I'm saying? Oh. You can clap if you want to clap. <laughs> All right? Lift up your right hand. Say it loud and clear. The might of God, the might of God is at work in me. The might of God is at work in me. Now hear me. See, what the devil tries to do is to orchestrate events that will change your perspective about two things. Number one, who God is to you than who you are in him. It needs your perspective about those two things altered. Some students sometimes feel terrible because of a carryover. And they feel, see, if my life is that important, why would I have to go through all those things? You see. You can even attend a school for four years. At the end of the day, they say the school is not accredited. And then? You need to find a life beyond the certificate. It must not define you. You need to find a life beyond the relationship. It must not define you. You need to find a life beyond your nationality. It must not define you. And that's why many folks cannot have a message for you until you are either poor, broke, sick, or a Nigerian. Because the gospel they have is only work, can only work when they find a need. And that gospel uses the strategy of manipulation to oppress you so they can now talk to you. Is that not the Nigerian gospel? How do you preach the gospel to those who are not sick, who are not broke, who are not poor? They are not trusting God for a house, not for a car. What's your message? Until you have a message in that situation, you, don't, you are not a minister of the gospel. Because your life can be too good for the good news. Can be. Listen to me. Whether you are Bill Gates or Elon Musk, without Christ, you are needy. You are. Are you following what I'm saying? What I'm telling you is the reason why many pastors, ah, I, I, I love the body of Christ, I love men of God. I won't say it. Ah, 
If you believe in length of days, don't do things that are anti-length of days. All right. Hey, we need to journey fast. Let me quickly take you to a scripture. Who is ready? Let's quickly journey to a scripture, Numbers chapter number 13. Numbers chapter number 13. Something needs to happen to us. Amen? Our life needs to experience a shift. Can I hear a big amen? amen? Our life needs to experience a shift. Can I hear a big amen? amen? Glory to God. I said glory to Jesus. Numbers 13, something happened here. Alright, so spies have been sent out to go search the land of Canaan. The land that God has promised them. So let me give you the background. The God who promised them this land is the God who had deli delivered them from Egypt. After over 400 years of slavery, 440 years of slavery, that God brought them out. While they were moving out of Egypt, they got to a place before the Red Sea. That God brought out water and um, separated the Red Sea by Moses stretching forth his rod. That God helped them. When they didn't have food, food, God sent quails to them. Man has been raining. That same God is the one who had brought them out of Egypt. In Exodus 19, God said, remember, I brought you out of Egypt on the wings of an eagle. That same God had not left them. He was still leading them by a pillar of cloud in the day, by a pillar of fire in the night. He sent them to go and spy the land of Egypt, the land of Canaan, where they are going to. And scripture says that they all went. All right, so let me... Let me, um, now let's hear from their return. Verse, from the, let's hear their report when they came back. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and, and to Aaron and to all the congregation. Please let me quickly say this. I think the Lord will have me say before I go back to this. If you can fall to a trap as a minister of God, where you need your experience to be one kind before you can talk about the truth. You are going to become manipulative. You are going to become a liar. You become destructive. You are going to steal. You will embezzle and you will destroy people's life. If you cannot be secure when certain things are not yet in your life and yet you have to minister to those who have much more. You need a level of experience to measure up and now be able to talk to them. You are a manipulator. The word of God has integrity in itself and it is complete. It does not need your experience for validation. What I'm saying now, you understand it at a different level. Let's leave it there. But God will have me straighten that out. Now, verse what are we now? 25, right? And they returned from searching of the land 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of Israel. You know, of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back what to them. And all the congregation shoot forth the fruit of the land. And they told him, saying, We came unto the land where thou sentest us. Surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the Hanak there, the children of Hanak there. And the Amalekite dwelt in the land of the south, and of the Hittite, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and dwelt in the mountains. And the Canaanite dwelt by the sea, by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses, and said, Let us go. Let us go at once to possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they are such unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we had gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw giants. Please. Pay attention to this verse 33. I want it projected. Look at what they saw. Look at what they saw. Because before they saw what they saw, they had an impression of themselves that affected what they saw. He said, and there we saw giants, the sons of Anak, which come out of the giants. And we were in our own sight 
as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. So the reason why they are saying this can't be done was not because of the opposition they saw or because of the way they perceived themselves. Let me say this to you. Hold on. Particularly if you are a Christian and you have started lying. You have started deceiving yourself. Listen to me. Your mediocrity can give you scripture to justify your smallness. It's all your life. Listening to any pattern of life you want to live, there are scriptures for it. What did I say? You want to live a life of smallness, a life of defeat. I tell you, right now you will sit down and bring 100 scriptures for it. And you will tell me that in the face of two or three witness scriptures, it will be established. How come I have over and you will have validation for smallness? Are you following them? What do Christians do? Somebody is writing a course. Didn't pass the course in school, needed to retake the course. The fellow perceives a call and says, maybe it is God that doesn't want me to pass it. Are you see where the devil will peg the fellow? There is a situation here. It is not the will of God. There is either lack or something bad is happening here. As long as you can bring God into the equation and make it about God, what the devil is doing, you'll be there for life. Not only are you going to be there, you will live that life of insincerity and make it a gospel. Make it a doctrine and afflict anyone who has other experiences. Are there no people who have issues and eight young ministers who are prospering? Because to them, a young man should not prosper like this. No, 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 no. You have to have suffered for a certain number of years. And I keep asking, and listen to me, and I've said the worst thing about false doctrine is that there's always a young man to say yes, sir. They are the problems of the future. Because both the foolish and the wise, they are also going to be in the future. You don't take advice from every old man. Fools go old too. True or not true? They do. And when they grow old, they have a word to give you. Yes. It is important you check. Can I tell you, if you can live a very honest life, can I, if something is not working in my life, the word of God is clear on this. The attempts to want to be to people what only God should be to them. I was sick last week. I used drugs for 14 days. I confess health, but I was sick. I'm telling you if you didn't know. Pastor, sick? Yes. Am I the one that died for you? Was it by my stripes that you were healed? As you are going, I'm going to. Are you following what I'm saying here? There's no need to hide. You don't have to be under any unnecessary pressure. Why we are here, we live stream. When this whole place was robust and doors, we were here worshipping God. Nothing changes this reality. All these other things are aesthetics. They are not the substance. Are you following what I'm saying here? This subtle attempt to want to be to people what only God should be. Listen to me. I offend my spiritual children and I beg them. I'm not God. I'm not perfect. I'm in the process of growth and realize it. I can teach you something yesterday, study the word today and find out I was I will call you. You will not sit back and I watch you go say, if I tell them now that eh, that time we're still growing, well, no, 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 no. I will tell you if you like, leave me. No, no, Allah. Leave. This attempt to be to people what only God should be to them will destroy our message. Do you get what I'm saying here? Do you get... I bless God for men like, I mean, I was thinking to Kenneth E again, he said the last time he felt headache. As at that time he was taking that message, it was over 40 years ago. I love it. I value it. But listen to me, it is not a word I should repeat if I, feel, if I felt headache yesterday. Many of you just go mindlessly hear a man of God say that me and my wife, we have never had any misunderstanding. You two go. Even after beating your wife, say, we have never, and your children look at you and say, if this is the God my father is serving, no, no, we won't serve that God. He's a liar. This attempt to want to, in a short while, be everything that mirrors perfection will alter. See, listen to me. I would prefer that you are sincere. And God too would prefer that you are sincere. <laughs> are you following what I'm saying? That you are very honest. 
Don't put yourself under any undue. Listen to me. We, there are things we want to do. There's no money to do them yet. Watch us. See us go through the process. How these things are coming. See us raise the seed. See, go. Anything you want to think, think. Let's do what is right in God. Those that God will build through that process, he will build it. Somebody, if you think I came to this church, uh, the AC is not even working, I can't stay. If the fellow doesn't know that, if something is not right in your father's house, your duty to do it, then leave. We will not borrow anything and go and rent AC. No, 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 no. Let's be here. If it is a house we are living, we are going to be there. True or not true? Many of you are waiting for material things to validate your reality. It's a lie. I am not better because I have a better car. I am better because Christ died and resurrected for me. The quality is the same with or without the car. That's the quality. With or without the house, that's the quality. On first class, on second class, on third class, the quality is the same. I'm not against academic excellence. No, no, I will never do that. I'm not in support of failing. No, no, I don't like it too. It doesn't dignify anybody. But I'm saying sometimes when some things happen, regardless of the experience, you must never define yourself in the light of what came to pass. No. That thing is too transient to define you. You can't. There's nothing like your what is reducing year by year because you are not married. What is that? One of my daughters, spiritual daughters, have a level of um, something. Let me just leave it like that. And one, one of those years back, she just reached out to me and said, Pastor, I, I don't feel cool. I said, what's happening? She said, I don't feel anybody who wants to marry me like this. I said, listen to me. You have a gift that others don't have. For someone like you, it will be difficult for a guy to come and lie. Anyone that will bypass this condition you are looking at and come for you, wants you. It matters how you see it. Why are many believers not doing anything? Because they have lenses through which they are seeing themselves. They have lenses that defines them. If something happens today, God forbid, your school certificate, your NY certificate, everything gets burnt. Is there a definition to you? Is there a discovery about you that is bigger than those things? Because the idea is that the real worth of a man should be indestructible. That's the idea. Whether when the land is peaceful or when the land is at war, the real world is indestructible. Is somebody really learning something here? What was the issue with those guys? They said we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. Are there, listen to me, listen to me. Please, Christians, hear me. Please hear me again. Please hear me. Never you look at something you don't have and believe any theology in your heart that that's the way God wants it. At least have it first, then now believe God doesn't want you to have it. <laughs> Is that okay now? Yes. Yes. Because that will hinder your expectation. And really the expectation of the righteous should not be cut short. You are trusting God for a child. Don't conclude. Don't please, Abba, even at 99. Scripture says that Abraham still didn't waver in faith. You are 40. You have concluded that maybe God just wants me to, uh, to adopt children. What are you talking about? Is adopting children bad? No. But don't get to a point where what can still be received. You know, make it about the position of God that this should not be gotten. Don't do that. That's insincerity. Are you following what I'm saying? Let me say this to you. When I came to this city, I didn't have a car. Traveling about, I've been known around places ministering. There was no car. I'll go to um, Iwo Road and board bus to a kitty, to different places, go and preach. There's no car. And all those things. Face insult, face embarrassment. There's nothing. All those things. Go for a program, take bike. So recently, when we changed our car, I, I did a test. I called my wife. 
And I said, when that car came in, were you happier? Is that the right English? Happier. Sounds like Jackie Happier. All right? Listen, you know what happened? I was going to go for a meeting. They were bringing the car from Lib As the car came, all right, we'll give you praise, guys. Let's get inside. We move. That was what happened. I, but I, I, when I came back, I called my wife. I said, when that car came, were you more happy? She said, no. If she was, that car is going. That's an idol, not a two. If you can alter our mood, that's an idol. We should have a fairly constant mood, whether on bike or in Uber. Constant. Our what is not altered. When this tent came down, did we not worship God? We are not managing to do it. It was an outflow. That's the life of faith. Because if you define yourself on these materials, you will deny the reality of who you are. You will not be able to knock certain doors because you will feel you don't have the dress. You feel you don't have the kind of shoe, the kind of shirt, the kind of trouser, the kind of car. That's where idol worshipping starts. You become the same thing as your politicians. Those that amass wealth. That becomes your proof of the favor of God. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? There are things that money can buy. Listen to me, you need the things that money can buy too. You know what I'm as you are saying, uh, let me balance it. <laughs> are you following what I'm saying here? Are you following what I'm saying here? No, please, let's be honest. Are you following me? We must balance it on both sides. So. The reason why we say that is not so that you will live here and say, I don't need financial resources. No, you need it. If we have it enough, we have AC here. We don't have it enough. Simple. But we have something that cannot increase or decrease. That's Christ. And he's here. Are you following what I'm saying here? Please get the balance. While we are waiting for that to happen, our joy is constant. When it comes, it is constant. Our worship praise does not increase because we now have something. No, no, no. Those things must be constant. Whatever increase your level of praise to God has become an idol. I'm telling you again. Thanksgiving and praise are not the same thing. Thanksgiving is to appreciate based on something that has just happened. Praise is for who he is. If we he is, is now changing based on new shoe and new clothes. Kai, something is, something is wrong with that heart. Are you following what I'm saying here? What I'm telling you is, if I bring a jeep into the house, and as the jeep is entering, my wife begins to roll. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. That jeep goes down. Don't praise in God. It's gone. Where? God said we should sow it. Listen to me. I don't have to hear it to sow it. Whatever represents Isaac must die. Only him must be enthroned. So how do we now have? We have them without putting them on the throne. Simple. That's how to have. We have them and we see them as tool for the job. Money, tool for the job. Are you following what I'm saying here? Good car, tool for the job. Good house, tool for the job. Good food, tool for the job. Not validation. I said not validation. I said not validation. I went to Lagos in a meeting this week, this weekend. And I was just asking myself, so I mean, some, how many years ago? I'll be in such meeting, just be there somewhere with my shoe. Just somewhere, shoe suffered me in this life. But see, the truth is, who I was then and who I am now, if there's any difference at all, it is not in what, it is knowledge. Why do we have Christians who are living like hush puppy? Because material things is the validation. <sighs> are you following what I'm saying here? Why can't you knock the doors you should knock? Why can't you reach for the height you should reach? Why won't you believe that your life is more important than this? Why won't you believe that you are also created for high places? Why won't you believe it? Because you are waiting for a form of validation. 
Some of you are waiting for people to recognize you, waiting for somebody to like your post, waiting for somebody to follow back your page, waiting for people to... Listen, when people come around you, let it be that you have spent time building track record. Let's check up on what you are doing and see that you have track record. And that's what is happening now. People want to bring a kind of minister to a program. And I've learned my lesson as a minister. Now, not everyone that wants to invite me are interested in inviting me for the kind of teachings I teach and all that. Some are just interested in the fact that this person's face should be on the poster with us. It looks like a form of validation in this city and all that. That's how vain we have gotten to. When you understand who you are, you understand that God can, you can build the work with God and it will grow without anybody validating you. It can grow. Why are musicians rubbishing pastors? Because they know they need them for the crowd. Let's leave it. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you, let, let me even say this. When the year was starting, we had plans to bring certain... I mean, I just said, all those money we grant used to do all those things. We equip our own studio and function with our own graces here. Why won't you believe that you too can be great? What defined your limit? It also matters what your definition of greatness is. Because you are likely going to define greatness in the, light, in the light of your depravity. For a poor man, he will never be able to define success as anything outside money. Are you following what I'm saying? You are likely going to dis describe or define greatness in the light of your what? Depravity in light of what you don't have. What is greatness to you? Greatness goes beyond what you have. Greatness goes beyond money. Greatness goes beyond things. goes beyond cars. You are great when your life... See, and greatness and stardom are not the same thing. Greatness and popularity are not the same thing. You can be popular and not be great. You see what happens to those who went to Big Brother Niger? You come out and the only usefulness to that life is to model clothes. Look at a very fine girl, big head. Apologies, please. I'm, I'm apologizing in advance. I'm not really clear anybody Christ died for all, but not all have accepted him. But you look at people, the only thing now they can do is to take pictures, take this, DSTV, Go TV, give away. There is no intellectual contribution because the system that brought them in was vain. So it matters the platform that is announcing you. You can be announced for a wrong thing. It is not about being known. It's about being poured out as a blessing. A great man and a popular man are not the same. A popular man can be richer than a great man. But a great man will leave posterity behind. Are you following what I'm saying? Tell yourself, don't just be fine for nothing. Have something. Because you will not be fine for too long. Uh, these things fade away. You get what I'm saying? fade away. They're fine for too long. If somebody is liking you, they have to like you for something that will not fade. If not, they are still blind. And life is not easy for the blind. It has to be beyond. It has to be. Because you are likely going to spend your investment in the area of your expectation. If your greatest expectation is your face, I'm a face model. What you should have been pumping here, you are pumping it here. And having seen you, when they now hear you, they hate what they see. That's what happens. They hate what they see. How can you be fine like this and you can't command good English? Please share. And let me say this too. English is not the test of intelligence. We borrowed it. Have something upstairs, whether in Yoruba or English, be able to solve problem. Ah. Amen. That's the truth. That's because, I mean, um, 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 <laughs> let me just leave it. I want to say something now. If I say it, you may leave church. <laughs> when I say things, don't say that, ah, I kill a little bit. You wait for me to say it first. Amen. <laughs> hey.
Let me say this to you. Um, God wants his children great. Say after me, God wants his children great. Say it again, God wants his children great. Um, something is happening now in the city of Ibadan. There's somebody who has been lied against, wrongly arrested. They've lied against him, and it's not true. A believer in Christ. At that point, we need people who are like Joseph. Um, what's his name now? Of Amatia, the guy that went, who, listen to me, have the secret place, but also have a voice in high places. The both can be combined. I said the both can be combined. Are you following what I'm saying now? Why we will need to have people who can say on our knees, Oh Lord, receive. Oh Lord, listen to me. He took the church to pray tirelessly for Peter to be received. He took that Joseph, one call for Jesus to be released. God wants us to have influence. Don't, don't deny it. I said God wants us to have influence. This, this culture you have that I don't want to be known, I don't want, listen to me, nobody is saying, influence doesn't mean they know you. No, 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 no. Let me explain. No, no, no. This thing of, I just want a quiet, is because you have nothing to offer. Your product can be more popular than you are. We don't know this person, but who is the brain behind Uber? Do we know him? Not all of you will know that brain, but we know Uber. If you don't want us to know, you give us something we should know. Are you following what I'm saying here? You are not giving us something we should know. You are not letting us know you. What are you here for? Give us something we should know. The days are coming upon the earth that will be very dark. And we will need believers who have voice in high places to help us navigate through. They are taught. They are not necessarily pastors. But because they exist, pastors can do their job. And I, we need to also understand this, that not everybody in church listening to this kind of teaching will become pastors. Not. Not everybody. I said not everybody. Are you following what I'm saying here? Not everybody. A very painful experience I shared with you. Last year, a young man that was killed by armed robbers, three days to his wedding. We're rushing him in different places. They said they need police report. If there was somebody there who has a voice, will they ask for police report? Talk to me now. Will they ask for police report? That guy died. And as usual in the body of Christ, we move on. Because we, are, we assume that that's the way God wants it. Because you don't know what their presence would have been. That's why you're not mourning their absence. But mind, dangerous, great minds that we have lost because there's no voice to speak. Listen to me. The days of pastors that jumped out of school are over. If there's anything I really treasure about the fathers, is that when it comes to academics, they are there. When it comes to spirituality, they are there. Why will a VC not rec recognize them? Because they are, they are old enough to have taught the VC as an undergraduate. Don't think this thing is just by one anointing and you are bullying people up and down. Now lie. Show us what you can produce. Show us what you can produce. You have to. And let me say this to you. Whatever can be developed should not be left. Develop yourselves. If not, your life will be very small and you will have scriptural reasons for it. You know, it starts like that till you now become 
ought and offended. Anywhere you now see greatness, you will not believe it can be God. Because you thought it was God that made you like that. If you rise up, rise up now and say, God is saying that I must never have more than 10,000 in a lifetime at once. You will listen to me. You will have scriptures for it. You will. Many are coming to my head, but if I, I don't want to give you because you don't need them. What I'm telling you is that in the midst of error, there are scriptures. But you will notice that people who have those kind of beliefs, <laughs> they are not usually people who have been exposed. Their environment has conditioned them. That's the truth. True or not true? You can be a victim of environment. These are things we have not talked about in the body of Christ. We have not talked about them. There are many people who jump into calling on campus and stab book. It was not God who called them. In the environment they grew up, all the pastors there were not graduates. It has ministered something to their hearts. If we take someone like that to the environment of Harvard and he sees a prof at 26, when he comes back, he will like book. And he will see our scriptures for it. Environment can speak like God. It can. I've seen this, that many life are going through needless pain. Needless pain. Needless pain. Don't convert the result of disobedience to be God. And say, you are, you are rebelling against God. The way of a transgressor is hard. Things are hard. You now say that... Um, You know, I mean, I prayed for all of you before I come out to preach that you will hear only what God wants you to hear. Are you following what I'm saying? God can take advantage of tough time to build his, his children and mature them. But God is not the one who brought the tough time. The tough time can come. Listen to me, there are seasons. I've told you that there are wilderness seasons. Are you following what I'm saying now? And it's not necessarily the length of time you spend there. Wilderness will always end when you know that man should not live by bread alone but by the word. The moment that revelation is achieved, wilderness will end. Please pay attention. But it can also continue for a lifetime and you will still say it is God. When you can be greater, don't be small and put God in charge. Don't be. Let it be known so you don't deceive anybody. If you finished BSc, you didn't go for master's, don't say it is God who said I shouldn't go. Please don't. Is that clear now? Can we, can we make that clear enough? Yes. If you finish master's, you didn't go for PhD, let it be known. It, it can be a choice. True or not true? It can be. And nobody will kill you for it. But the young men are now confused. And say, so when I have this kind of calling, ah, ah, ah. Set yourself free from the bondage you've wired yourself in. Set yourself free. All those limitations you've given yourself that it was not God. Be honest enough to say, this is me. Set yourself free from self-inflicted bondage. Please set yourself free. Set yourself free. I want to give you a few minutes to have quiet moment and introspect. There are things that many of you have abandoned that you can get back into. Sometimes people reach out to me and say, Papa, I'm having a job opening to so and so state. Never will I tell anyone not to go. Because you can be anywhere in the world. Pursue what God will have you pursue. And still be blessed. We are not going to sit on any life. Limit anybody because you are in church. Not even because you are a worker. You can be in Port Harcourt and still be connected. The world is global now. Except it is God. 
who is now saying what you believe. Let every wall that God hasn't built crumble. Maybe in a meeting they speak against traveling abroad. And it is God's plan for you to go. Don't put yourself in any cage. If God has not told you to stay in this country, don't stay. Don't imagine consecration. Don't imagine it. Emancipate yourself. And shout it out loud. I can be great too. God is not the one limiting me. No. No. He said, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He said, the thought I have towards you are thought of peace, not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. Cry out. Step out of the darkness of shame. You have wrapped yourself in. There is hope for a tree that is cut down. Because at the scent of water, it will spring back to life again. Shalakate kata kabati akavala dibai. Shaida kabala diai. Hear me. Amen. Hear me. Many of you are not the sound of my voice. Need to take your finance serious. You are coming from homes where they are in pain because of lack. It is only going to hurt them more to that pain. They will never believe in this your Jesus. To keep denying them of the flavor that can come from you and lie against God that is the one making you like this. If things are difficult, say it because things are not right. Don't ever make it God. Many of you need to break out, take relationships serious. Let new doors open. Be a blessing. Get more things done. Eyes on your feet, everybody. And cry out for deliverance for many shackles of the mind, of limitations to your mind. Don't pray quiet prayers. Cry out for deliverance. Cry out. Confess, confess. Confess the promises of God for you. The word of God, the reality of that word. Confess it. Confess it. Where is the power of darkness when Jesus is the king? Please play on the sax. Please pray loud and clear, everybody, for light, 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 emancipation, light, 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 light. Shakata balakata bakata bakata. Ele mo kote boro koti kai. Ayakata la bakati. Shala kata bala kata 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 kata. Ele kita baka bala kati. Ye kete te voko brofete kai. La kata bala kai. Light, 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 light. Light, light, light. Ye kete voko bakata bakata. Ye kete voko baka brafati. Light, 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 light. Let light shine, let light shine. Kala kabo kote roko shete. Ye kete roko brofete roko pakai. Ayende mokombro pikai. Yang takabala kate. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you. Serve light church, hear me? Everyone connected to me as sons and daughters, please hear me. Mentees, please hear me. We are currently going through a forceful transition. And that's because we're a living body. Are you following what I'm saying here? We are going through a what? Forceful transition. The army we are raising is not just those who speak in tongues, no. But those who have voice and keys to high places. 
Are you following what I'm saying here? Not only an army of preachers. No, 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 no. Of doctors, of profs, of, of, of captains of industries who yet know that the sole purpose of this is to advance the kingdom. Are you following what I'm saying here? Swerve so light, are you following what I'm saying here? Tell your neighbor, emancipate yourself. Say it again, emancipate yourself. Say it again, emancipate yourself. Say it again, emancipate yourself. Can I pray for you tonight? Please, I'm begging you again. I'm begging you in the name that is above all names. Come out. Into all your potentials. Come out. Are you following what I'm saying here? Into all your potentials. Do what? Come out. Don't give us the anointing alone. We want more. There is more that God, you are too big for what you are now. Come out. And I tell you, I'm teaching what I'm teaching now from the place of secret tears for this house. That God, I've asked God if there's a way what I'm teaching have looked like what has made people feel convenient in what they are. Have mercy, Lord. I will not teach it. Listen to me. Those needs you have are still, I'm not saying you will come to a point where there's no need. No. They are still a need at this level because you have not entered something. One revelation from a meeting like this, somebody can come out. I was speaking with one of my friends yesterday morning. We were having a video call. And he began to send me um, links to different eateries in Lagos. What are they selling? Gary and anything. Gary and and people are trooping there in their thousands. They will sell Gary for you even if you don't like it, you will like it. People are receiving inventions, innovations, and different things. Many of you are sitting on plenty in lack. Listen to me. The day you stop questioning God and start saying, why sit I here? Not why has God kept me here? No, no, no. You will never come out like that. It's not the one who did so. Those guys didn't ask God. They said, why sit we here till we die? God is God. He's omnipresent. Yet in his presence, they can die. But also in his presence, they can get up. What did Jesus come to display at the pool of Bethesda? That you don't have to wait for steering. Once in a year for healing to happen. I am the steering of the pool. Wherever I am, healing is. Wherever I am, abundance is. Stop questioning God. He has given you all that pertains to life and godliness. Stop what? Stop what? Stop what? Was I not the one that was praying for you this year when we were entering the new year? It was in the place of that prayer. I also, that God was used to pray for you, got a revelation. I made certain moves. I'm not going to tell you much. But don't be less when you can be more. Please, don't. I ask right now that the spirit of fear that has become a voice that has invaded your minds and hearts communicating smallness to you, making you make decisions of mediocrity, that spirit is flushed out now. That spirit is flushed out now. That spirit is flushed out now. Receive the spirit of boldness. Begin to dare the impossible. Do the impossible. Knock the kind of doors you've been afraid of. From today, no more record of intimidation. In the name of Jesus, you will no longer be intimidated. You come out. When you leave this place tonight, it will occur to you that you've been made for more. 
and you will do nothing than become that more. In the name of Jesus. When we are counting women, we are future forward women, leading women in the nations beyond our wives, your name will not be missing. When we are counting men who are priests, providers, leaders, thought leaders, leaders of industries, leaders of ministries, your name will not be missing. You've been made for more. You will not be small. In the name of Jesus. Everyone under the sound of my voice, the cry of greatness, 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 greatness will not stop ringing in your heart. Till you have become exceedingly great. Now hear me. Early church people come out. Now I've seen you guys operate the way you are operating. But I still tell you, you have not started. Because you are not operating in the fullness of the potential you went with. No, you are not. You are not. What did I say? You are not. You see, when the move of God comes, it's a radical takeover. There is no minister who believes in obstacle more than they believe in the ministry will succeed with the ministry. There's a mentality that is in this house. If we don't succeed, we will. There are smokers, there are addicts, there are gays, there are lesbians, there are people who are in different places. Some of them cannot join you yet because you are not operating at the level of excellence that is required. Because that they are deep in those things doesn't mean they don't understand excellence. Excellence is a language. And you understand that you will only do little if you don't have what it takes to project it. The gospel is free. The propagation is not cheap. And that's why you have to know. And that's why I told your leaders, none of you have been sent to stop whatever you are doing for you to be a part of the ministry. Wear a coat of many colors. You can be head of industry. Some of you are only tech organizations. We are not stopping anybody. And guess what? If what you are doing requires that you leave this city, leave. You are the move of God, not the location. Are you following what I'm saying here? We have never and we will never tie anybody down as against the plan of God for their life because of the church. You are the church. When you move, the church moves. Until we understand this, you will become small just for you to be clapping and be part of the pictures we project. That's not the intention of God. Whenever you get to a place, put your replacement there because you are a moving train. Are you following what I'm saying here? Even we are not stagnant here. If God calls us to move today, we move. None of you should. Are you following what I'm saying? God is not using you at the expense of your future. He has both figured out. Give your all, give your best. But don't become small because of church. The church too will not recognize you if you don't grow. Value your finance, value your process. If you want to talk about people who are sons and daughters, most churches display those who have succeeded. Be a son and a daughter with wisdom. Succeed while you are still submitted. Are you following what I'm saying here? I have a vow to God. We will not be a part of the ministry that will deceive people or use them. No, 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 no. 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 Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying here? I stretch my hands and I pray for you in no time. All the resources needed for a radical explosion in LA Church. Receive it. But much more I pray for you. Receive the grace of multiplication in every aspect of your life. Finance, academics, everywhere. Receive the grace. Multiply. Be fruitful. Increase. Everywhere you get to. It is done. In Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? Yes, Give the Lord a big, 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 big hand. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When we are counting men who are standing out, your name will never be missing. Amen. And guess what? Even you can't decide to die young. 
we will enjoy all that God has given you for our generation. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Give God a big hand. Come on, do it well. Do it well. Do it well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Quickly, let's pray for those who are giving their tithes. Then I invite my wife to come and welcome first timers and wrap up the service. All right. If you are part of the 500 man partnership structure, please be faithful. Be very faithful. And much more, we appreciate you. All right. We are trusting God that before the end of this week, we can increase two more ACs here. Can I hear a big amen? Well, hope you know that all these announcements we are announcing is because there is still a need for somebody that the Lord has really lifted. Hope you know these things are not a big deal. All the ACs needed here, totally what we need more is not more than six million. Is it more than maybe just around six, seven? Because you exist, these things will not make announcement again. And if you are online listening to us, you want to be a part of the 500-man partnership structure, please send us a message to Flame Line. As I speak now, the media will be imputing the Flame Line on every platform, Instagram, Facebook, um, Mixeller. Please, you can get the Flame Line. Send a message there so we can add you. It's 13,000 and above per month, 500 people for the next six months. All right? God bless you. I bless all of you giving tight. Be blessed. Those who are giving online, you have the account details also online, please. So I can pray, meaning that if you are giving your offering or you want to sow a seed, still give to the account details that is online. I bless you, you are blessed. You are blessed with the dew from above. You are blessed with the fatness of the earth. You are blessed with corn and wine. There is no lack in the name of Jesus. God will multiply your source of income and it will increase you in the name of Jesus. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please drop your tights. All right. For those giving online, you have it there. For those who are watching, watching from Ife Church, please give to your branch and all that. All right. Um, let's welcome my wife, Pastor Miracle Femi Lazarus.